Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, 10 Ways to Be More Authentic. And I'm going to talk about authenticity in a general sense, but also authenticity from the public speaking, the presentation skills, the trainer perspective. Because authenticity is one of the key things we as speakers, trainers, educators, facilitators need to have. The audience will connect with you, will trust you, will accept your challenge, your position, more so if you're very authentic, very real, very genuine. Ask questions as we go. Don't wait for me to stop. Take notes, participate, give your comments, your points of view, and think and apply. Is there anything of the 10 steps, the 10 strategies I'm going to share with you that you could use to make yourself more authentic the next time you're presenting or training, the next time you're having a conversation? The thing with webinars and training and workshops is if you don't do something after it, if you don't take something away, then it's been literally a waste of time. It may be a nice nice entertaining presentation, but there's got to be something that happens for your audience. So as my audience, I'm asking you to think about what you might do differently to be more authentic, to be more engaging, to connect more with your audience. It's all around this authenticity. I like this quote from Oscar Wilde, be yourself because everyone else is already taken. And that's our uniqueness as well. So one of the things as speakers and presenters that we have in our advantage is that we are unique. And as we give information that may be relatively common knowledge, time management, goal setting, public speaking skills, you bring your authenticity, your uniqueness, your genuineness to each of those messages. And that can make a big difference in the outcome all right. So the first way to be more authentic is to ask yourself, are you in tune with who you are? This is your values, your beliefs. Do you walk the talk? So you're consistent around your message. You're consistent around your actions. I've often used the analogy of a time management trainer who starts late or who goes over time. The financial planner who arrives in their Mercedes Benz and their investment advice will be don't buy depreciating assets. You should invest in assets that grow in value. And here they are with a $100,000 car, which is going down value. So who you are on the stage is who you are off the stage. As a speaker or trainer, we can think we need to become more, more polished, more perfect. I don't want to use the word fake, but sometimes we do come across as fake because we adopt this non-authentic persona because we've stepped on stage. We step before a group of people. Just remember morning tea, lunch, after the seminar. I was in Karatha a week ago and one of the gentlemen wanted to stay back and have a chat with me. So we had a chat and we had a drink. And... It was so important that the person he'd just seen for the day was the same person he saw after 4.30 as we're sitting down, relaxing and having a chat. I'm still on message. I haven't changed. I am the real person. So please understand, be authentic with your message, with your actions, walk the talk. Who you are when you're presenting should really be who you are when you're not presenting. 
Do you help others be authentic? So authentic people don't expect others to fake it or play roles either. We want to see authenticity all the time. I sometimes see at Toastmasters meetings, for example, I see people who do their presentations and they just become bigger than real. And I already know who these people are. They're nice, everyday people. They love to have a conversation with me, but put them on stage and, whoa, do they become really fake a performance. I sometimes see in the medical field, uh, scientists, doctors, clinicians who I know, who I've worked with, when they go to present, they become very plastic, very polished, very performed. This reduces your ability to connect and build rapport and build trust with your audience. So try and be authentic. And one of the things that we as speakers or trainers can do as we help people with this, and I'm not saying just go up to someone after they've spoken and say, wow, that was really fake. You need to be more authentic. Help people trust themselves, help people have self-confidence and conviction in their message. So when they go on stage, when they deliver a presentation or do training, they don't have to try and fake it. They don't have to try and be a polished professional because they've got this conviction, this deep-seated self-belief. As you and I do when we're authentic and we're, when we're telling our honest truth, help people find that authenticity by letting them, helping them, teaching them to trust themselves, to have self-belief in their message and conviction in their message. Can you let go of negative people? Authentic people are able to distance themselves from negative people. And they have respect, conviction, self-belief that they won't spend time with naysayers or negative people. And it, it can be hard because sometimes it can be an unpopular message. And sometimes the in crowd may be not in line with what your values and your beliefs are. So it's very hard, especially at team meetings or within the workshop environment or a seminar to not toe the line. Those naysayers go with the negative vibe, even if it's a positive vibe, a wrong, a, a incorrect line of thinking, an incorrect line of uh, education. It's really hard to go against that, but authentic people have the courage. They're prepared to be vulnerable. And sometimes as a speaker or trainer, we need to speak the unpopular truths. We need to have the courage to do that. Sometimes it's an organization. Sometimes it's social media. Some of the groups that I belong to, I'm not happy with the trends and the direction of some of the discussions, so I no longer participate. But on my LinkedIn profile, I will put messages and content that amplifies my position, amplifies my beliefs, and amplifies the messages that I believe to be true. So I'm not going to bad mouth or try and make negative comments of those people, but I need to distance myself. That's what authentic people do. They stay true to themselves, true to their values, true to their messages, and true to their, their beliefs. Uh, thanks, Steve. Steve's just asked, what if you're the only person who is of this opinion and it's very hard to say, look, I don't agree and this is the way we should do things. Yeah, it, it is tough, there's no doubt about it. And you can have the whole world against you. 
the classic example that I use is Professor Barry Marshall, the Nobel Prize winner for medicine. Uh, Professor Barry Marshall discovered what caused peptic ulcers. So these are stomach ulcers. And he found a bacteria. And this is in the early 1980s, 81, 82. And no one believed that a bacteria would cause peptic ulcers. And he also found out, consequently, an antibiotic would cure peptic ulcers, but no one believes him. So he's the sole voice, him and some colleagues in Fremantle, the sole voice in the world. So eight years of negative pushback of people writing negatively about him, his, his uh, junior status, his coming from a non-major hospital like Harvard University or King's College in London, instead coming from Fremantle Hospital, all this negative stuff. But he stayed true to himself. And after eight years of setbacks, eight years of negative pushback from the world, the majority of the world, he finally was able to prove his discovery. And of course, he's now a Nobel Prize winner, Nobel Prize winner for medicine. And Helicobacter pylori is the bacteria that causes peptic ulcers. And there's an antibiotic, a single dose of antibiotic that will cure peptic ulcers around the world. Great, brilliant advancement in medical science despite that negative. So it is tough and it's that conviction and that self-belief and that authenticity that al allows you to keep working, to keep true to your message in the time of um, negativity. Now, that's not to say that you won't be wrong. And at some stage, if the body of evidence is against your position, you may have to accept, be authentic, be vulnerable and say, yeah, I need to change my conviction. There was no body of evidence against Professor Barry Marshall and he did some further research and proved that he was right. So thanks for that question. Need to move on. So the next one is, do you express your true opinions? And this is once again back to that unpopular message, that tough messages. So you need to be true to yourselves. Authentic people will say, I do not agree with this. Authentic people will put forward an alternative, even contentious view because they believe it. They are aligned with it. They're confident and they don't worry about the negativity. They don't lie. They tell people the truth. So when my wife goes shopping and she brings home clothes and tries them on and says, so Peter, what do you think about this? This is a touchy one. Um, if I give my true opinion all the time, I sometimes get in trouble. And, but it normally comes back to bite me later when I say, oh yeah, that looks nice and really I, I can't stand it. And then we're going out and my wife is dressed up in something that I don't like. And then I say something then, or someone else points out to you, by the way, this dress doesn't suit you Violet, and she said, well, Peter, why didn't you say something? So I've learned to express my true opinion and people can disagree with it and, and that's okay. So this is one of the ways to be more authentic. Do express your true opinion. Do research it as a speaker. Do have some backup. Do have some research. Good if you've done your own research, but also you can borrow some research, you can borrow some credibility. Harvard University said this, King's College said this, University of Sydney said this, and this helps you express your true opinion, even if it is not congruent with what other people believe. Are you confident? Authentic people come across as confident. As a trainer, speaker, educator, facilitator, you need to come across as being confident. 
Now, about half the population, 40, 45% are introverts. Many people suffer from imposter syndrome and we're worried about being found out. Social anxiety kicks in. Introverts, we don't want to be in the spotlight. We'd rather just share our knowledge via email or write reports or do research. So this ability to be confident really helps you as an authentic person. So as a speaker, you need to bring that confidence to the stage. And one of the things I talk about in How to Overcome Your Fear of Public Speaking is a terminology called FOWOT, F-O-W-O-T. So what? Give me one moment. So for what? And it stands for fear of what others think of you. For what? Harvard University calls it FOPO. Fear of other people's opinions it's the same thing when we get on stage and we present an idea when we educate when we facilitate when we train other people will have an opinion of us other people will think things about us they'll agree with us they'll disagree with us they'll have alternative viewpoints authentic people do not suffer from faux po. They do not suffer from faux what. And the Harvard research on FOPO says that FOPO holds a lot of potential leaders, a lot of managers from leading uh, strategically, from leading courageously, and they don't share their vulnerability because they're afraid of what other people's opinions are, so they hold back. They remain conservative, they keep doing the same thing. And in this day of volatility, of uncertainty, of fast paced change, we need leaders that are able to be agile and take risks without fear of other people's opinions or fear of what people think. And here's the thing, what other people think. In workshops, people do form an opinion of me. But what they think of me at that point in time is none of my business. You in the virtual world watching this webinar, you have formed an opinion of me in the short time you've been with me, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. What your opinion of me is none of my business. Psychologists call this fear of negative evaluation. Fear of negative evaluation. And it's one of the things that causes social anxiety, uh, obsessive compulsive behavior, a little bit of stress and anxiety. So what I've learned to understand is that people will have an opinion of me. It's none of my business. I'm there to authentically and genuinely share my knowledge, my expertise, my information. And if I can help people move forward, whether you like me or not really doesn't matter. So as a speaker, as a trainer, do not let faux what hold you back. Authentic people do deep conversations. Do you do deep conversations? And this quote from Eleanor Roosevelt, I think really captures that great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Did you watch the footy last night? Small minds discuss people. I don't like Peter. I think Peter's opinion's wrong. I think he's a little bit off the mark. Great minds discuss ideas. Do you do deep conversations? I love the quote from Stephen Covey, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And this is around empathy and around listening and going really deep and allowing the other person to fully put their view forward. It's about being curious. 
and to go deep with a conversation, sometimes you can say, can you tell me more about that? That's interesting. How would that work? And then they go deeper and they go deeper because you're showing empathy, you're paraphrasing, you're reflecting, as opposed to putting your idea forward. I know how to fix that. And you shut them down and you're going straight into solutions without fully going into the deep conversation. Authentic people allow people to vent. They do deeper conversations, not superficial, and they show empathy and curiosity. As a speaker, we'd probably call this thought leadership. You don't just regurgitate, rediscuss what's in the textbooks, what's in the research. You go a little bit deeper. You create your own thoughts and it's called thought leadership. Moving on, uh, number seven, take advice but evaluate it. I call this feedback. Remember when I spoke about faux what and faux po? Fear of other people's opinions and fear of what others think. At the time, doing a workshop right now, I don't focus on what you think. I'm not worrying whether you have negative evaluation of me, whether you, uh, your, it's your private thought. But what we do do is we do feedback. We get feedback from you, feedback from my audience. So I welcome any comments from this webinar via email. So we take that advice, we take that feedback, but we evaluate it. So authentic people welcome feedback. In welcoming feedback, it shows you've got the courage to be challenged, to be, I guess, critiqued. And some of that will be negative. People that are afraid of negative, uh, negative judgment, negative evaluation, won't ask for feedback. But here's the thing with being authentic, authentic and authenticity. You evaluate it and you may not adopt it. You don't have to accept the feedback. So feedback is just that. It's another person's feedback, another person's opinion of what they saw, heard, felt when you spoke, when you delivered that training, when you facilitated that group. Before accepting it, before making a change, you need to evaluate it. So we've heard the saying that feedback is the food of champions. And we've also heard the saying, the customer is always right. I don't think the customer is always right. And modern customer service is saying that, you know, we need a mutual respect between the customer and the, and the service provider. And Feedback is the food of champions, but not all feedback is valuable. Not all feedback is correct. Some people give you feedback through lenses, through biases, uh, through personal biases that make the feedback less than helpful. So speakers use feedback and we use it as a continuous improvement opportunity. So when you do present, when you do train, do welcome feedback in, but part of being authentic is allowing yourself to evaluate it. Don't take it personally. And sometimes you get some stuff that allows you to adjust, to improve, to add something in, just to make your presentation, your feedback, uh, your, your workshop that little bit better. Moving towards the end. Authentic people don't complain about problems. They understand that they are responsible. So this is called ownership. This is called responsibility. Authentic people take responsibility. The reverse of that is we call it the blame game or the victim, the victim mindset, the victim mentality. In my keynote, I talk about my journey as a person who stutters and 
for much of my life, I was a victim and I blamed everyone else for my misfortune, for my lack of opportunity in my career, for being overlooked for promotion, for being laughed at and teased and bullied. And I just blamed, I was angry, I was the victim. My life changed when I became authentic, accepted my stutter and decided to take ownership. So as a speaker, take ownership, don't be a victim. And when there's problems, authentic people offer solutions. And one of the things from a trainer, presenter, speaker point of view, one of the metaphors you can live by every time you speak is what, what headache, what problem are you the paracetamol for? How do you help your audience move forward? How do you help them be authentic and get out of their victim mindset? Are you internally driven? Authentic people are internally motivated. Introverts and extroverts, internally motivated to be on stage, to be at front of that workshop. So we're kind of proactive rather than reactive. We don't wait for something to happen. We are proactive. We're in control of our journey. We're in control of our lives. Authentic people embrace that. So from a speaker or facilitator or presenter perspective, this is what I think authenticity means and how you know you're driven internally. You look forward to every presentation. I was in Darwin on Monday, Tuesday this week. I delivered two workshops and I was really excited to be there. A little bit worried about flying. Numbers were down a little bit because of cancellations, but it still went ahead. It was still great. And I was so pleased to be there. When you're on stage, you're excited to be there. And in actual fact, there's no place you'd rather be. So right now in front of this, uh, this webinar, I'm so pleased to be here. I'm privileged to be here. I want to be here. That's what you need to tap into if you want to demonstrate your authenticity and if you want to have impact, connection, rapport, trust with your audience, that internal motivation. If you're just going through the motions, thank you everybody for coming. The occupational health and safety training is a one day workshop and we're going to get through it as quick as we can. That's not authentic and really you'd rather be somewhere else. I'd rather be somewhere else. So you need to tap into that internal motivation, that intrinsic, I want to be here. This is where I should be right now. And number 10, make the best of any situation. Is your glass half full? Is your glass half empty? Tough times at the moment. I haven't mentioned coronavirus but it is tough times. So the authentic people look on the positive sides. They are more optimistic than they are in terms of being a negative. So the authentic speaker shows up, shows up fully. And the show goes on. The authentic speaker is agile and can respond to any situation. And these can be technical hitches. The authentic speaker does not worry if the power goes out. I was at Rio Tinto, shut down. It was daylight. I had no uh, electricity shut down, still daylight. So I presented four hours of my one day workshop before the power came back on. No power, no power, no PowerPoint, no videos, just flip chart my voice and some engaging activities that I could do with the group. I could not do this webinar if there was a power shutdown, but what would you do? Authentic people are able to respond to any situation. They do not panic. They're agile and responsive. So these are the 10 things. Are you in tune with who you are? Help others be authentic. Let go of negative people, negative groups, 
express your true opinions even if they are unpopular. Be confident. Don't worry about other people's opinions. Go deep, deep conversation. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Be curious. Take advice, but evaluate it. Get the feedback and then judge whether that feedback is of value to you. Don't complain about problems. Be internally driven. Be happy to be there. Show up 100%. And be agile and responsive to any situation. Workshops coming up. Perth in April. Bendigo in June. Probably Mildura in May. Violet and I are still planning for workshops. We are still travelling as long as Qantas does domestic flights. We are doing small groups and we're having one person per table. We are bringing hand sanitizer with us. We're doing away with the handshake. And we're asking people not to attend to self-isolate if they have a cold, a headache, any sort of sickness, even a common cold, best and you're sneezing, best not to come. So we're doing everything to make our small workshops safe. It could be that we are shut down, uh, but even the extreme of Donald Trump, who said no more than 10 people per room, uh, we, we would comply with that in our workshops. Next webinar for you on this webinar. Next week, Thursday the 26th of March, Six Habits of Successful Speakers. So remember, authenticity is how you connect. Authenticity is how you come across as genuine, how you build reports, how you can ask people to follow you. As a speaker, trainer, facilitator, educator, authenticity is one of your magic, one of your magic pills to bring to every presentation. Thanks everybody. This is Peter Jew, signing out from today's webinar.